Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about literary criticism. We're going to do a brief introduction to different types of criticism, but first we're going to start about talking about what criticism is not. Um, this is the typical four-star rating you see uh, in movies. Literary criticism is not this type of criticism where we call some things good and some things bad. You might see book reviews online um, or reviews for a play, but that's not really the same as literary criticism. So what is literary criticism? Well, when you have primary sources, those are the first original things, um, that's the play or the short story or the poem that was written um, years ago, usually, for this class. Um, then you have secondary source, and a secondary source is something that analyzes or interprets that creative work. You can think of this uh, type of literary criticism, it's a little bit like what you've been doing already in your journals and discussion boards. You have the short story, and then you're interpreting it for the reader. So your discussion board is already a type of literary criticism. I just want to talk a little bit more about what that means. So, literary criticism analyzes, evaluates, or interprets literature. There are a lot of different critical approaches, and we're going to be looking at those. What I want you to remember is that these are just filters. We're not taking things out of the story um, to make up interpretations. We're just sort of emphasizing certain parts focusing on particular aspects of the short story or play, and in doing so we learn something new or different. These are types of literary criticism. We're going to be talking about some of them today. Again, it's a filter, so think of it like glasses that you're putting on. You're putting on the glasses of formalist criticism, which we'll talk about in a second. You're putting on the glasses of feminist criticism, and you're just viewing the text in a different way to learn something new about that text or something new about the person who wrote it or um, the human condition in general. So formalist criticism is basically what you've already been doing. You're looking at a close reading of the text, a small portion of the short story, and examining it step by step to analyze it, looking at the formal features. So things like structure, imagery, symbolism, characterization, genre. A lot of times when people write this type of criticism, they also look at other things that have been written in this type of criticism. So for example, um, you read Happy Fun Home, uh, or the, the Happy Death in within the, the story Fun Home. Um, you'd look at the genre of the graphic novel, the tone that the author uses to talk about her family, um, the symbolism of being in a funeral home. To take another example, uh, this is a still from Minority Report. That's what you read last week. So what are the conventions of science fiction? What does pre-crime mean? What does that symbolize? Uh, something about racial profiling for today. Um, it's very symbolic of, of that and of prejudging people. Biographical criticism looks at a person's life and focuses on how the author's life shaped his or her work. So a lot of times when people are writing this criticism, they'll look at things that the author has written, they'll look at traditional biographies about the author and facts and information about the author's life. So for example, the yellow wallpaper which you're going to look at today, we have some biographical criticism about this. Um, what the, uh, this is from Happy Death, um, looking at the biographical criticism for this. Um, what did the author go through? Um, what parts of her life in this story are fictionalized? What parts are actually true? That kind of thing. Psychological criticism is somewhat similar to biographical criticism. It looks at how the story affects the reader's psychology. It looks at the psychology of the characters. And it can sometimes look at the psychology of the author. So, for example, in the yellow wallpaper, um, we learn that the author herself was put on bed rest for a long period of time and this caused her to feel a little crazy. How did that shape the story? 
for another example, when we looked at the rocking horse winner, um, what were the psychology of Paul and his mother? I asked you guys whether you thought his mother was loving mother or a cold mother. What drove Paul to act the way he did? Um, how did his psychological problems call him to cause him to die? Another type of criticism is historical criticism. Historical criticism looks at the social and cultural aspects of the historical period during which the story was written. I chose not to have you read everyday use, so instead I'll talk about um, the yellow wallpaper again. This was written at a time when women could not vote and could not own property. Um, so how did those aspects of the, the story affect the author and affect the story? For another example, we have The Rose for Emily. Um, we didn't look at really the historical influence here, but Emily is supposed to be a symbol of the Old South. This is a little bit after the Civil War, um, and the South was kind of decaying. So the author, William Faulkner, writes a lot about that decay and um, the grotesqueness of trying to cling to the past. Gender and feminist criticism identifies uh, sexual identity in the creation and reception of the story. So a lot of gender studies began in the feminist movement in the 1970s. Writers start to question and examine masculine assumptions around the world. Some of the critics also look at women and the role of women and female power in these stories. And then eventually this leads to looking at sexual norms, um, gay and lesbian studies. So for example, again, here's a, a, a still from the yellow wallpaper. Um, what is the role of female empowerment in that story? And when looking at the author, how did she feel about women who have power or don't have power? Um, how do women react when, um, or how does anyone react when they don't have power? Marx's criticism also has to do with power. It looks at historic criticism, the social, cultural, economic, and political context during which a story was written. So what are the political status of the author, the characters, the readers in the story? How are some characters politically or economically placed above other characters within the story? This is the Marxist pyramid. If you notice there at the top, you have the very, very wealthy, um, the rulers, the king and queen perhaps. Right underneath you have the religious leaders and the military. Underneath that, you have the wealthy or the wealthy middle class. And then at the very bottom, you have the people who um, are working for the rest of them and holding that, that pyramid up. To take an example from something you might be more familiar with, in the Hunger Games, you have the people in the capital, right? Those would be the people at the very top. Then you have people um, in the middle who are wealthy. Uh, the um, the uh, first and second districts are, are really the army. And then you eventually have people at the bottom. So what I want to emphasize here is that literary criticism, you're not just removing passages that you don't like and scrubbing them away. Um, you're really just looking at things through different contexts and different lenses to examine works in new and interesting ways.